Hello everyone, Alexander Frost here, and this is the final episode of Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. Today this will be a clip show in which I'm doing post-commentary. I will be playing as Maria and we will essentially run through all of the alternate stage paths that I missed, as well as any secrets that I may have missed. Um, starting off by playing as Maria, just to kind of showcase just how much more powerful she is. She is essentially the easy mode of the game, as you can see. She can attack while moving, she can fire up the two doves at once, which acts sort of like boomerangs and can actually catch attacks on the way back. As well as, she has a considerably more controllable double jump. Unlike Richter, who always has to jump at the very top of his arc or not at all, she can double jump right before hitting the ground to actually break her fall or change her trajectory. She has considerably greater reach. Her um, sub-items are different, however. A few of them even combine, um, actually one specifically, actually combines the elements of two of Richter's others. The uh, book for her combines the aspects of the Bible book and uh, I'm stuck. It's kind of interesting. Now, hopefully I don't screw up too terribly badly, but, well, let's be honest. Food items for her are replaced with, um, instead of meat and chicken and whatnot, she gets parfaits and other sweet things, because she's a little girl. She also has a few other skills that Richter does not, such as the ability to slide. <clears throat> now... The thing you want to be careful of when you play as Maria is don't let yourself be lulled into a false sense of security, and that is her item crash with the red bird, which is um, her version of the axe, I think. That or the um, or the dagger. But yes, as you can see, I got lulled into a false sense of security a little bit. I thought I'm invincible. I can handle this. I can jump around and do things that Richter can't, and I ended up jumping into a lot of attacks. Did I say this was stage 2? I might have said this was stage 2. I meant to say it was stage 1. I apologize for that. Now, as this is a clip video, I am going to be going through all of the stages. Of course, I'll be jumping around and such. Some of the bosses I'll fight, some of them I won't. Um, so, I I'm kind of doing this off the cuff. I'm not actually... Uh, I have no prepared script. I thought about it, but... Considering how long it took me to get everything edited and put together, this has taken a couple of days, and I, I just want to get it done so I can get it to you guys and finally put it close to an amazing series. Dragon is piss easy with the birds, as you can see. Piss easy. Like, it is ridiculous how easy it is to fight them. Or it, rather. And this will take us immediately to the normal stage one. Since we fought the normal boss for stage one, we'll move on to the normal stage two. I'm sorry, I meant to say stage two. Now, the only thing I missed, the only two things I missed were the alternate path and um, a sound item, a record. Now, instead of skipping ahead, I went on ahead and just ran through the stage because I figured, hey, why the heck not? Again, to kind of showcase just how strong she is and how easy it is to play the game as her. Not that it's unrewarding, it's fun to be able to just blitz through enemies like this. But uh, there's certainly a level of reward and um, satisfaction when playing as Richter, because he's more about the precise strikes. He's more about the timing and hitting just right. So it feels just as good to play as Richter as it does Maria. Of course, the thing you have to remember about Rhea is, she is a little girl, and because she is a little girl, she takes hits like a little girl. She is not nearly as durable. I have found this out the hard way many, many times. And uh, while it seems like she's faster than Richter, it's actually, she has the same movement speed, but because she has so much shorter legs, she's taking more steps. So she takes about two to Richter's one, but she still moves at the same speed, so it looks like she's moving a heck of a lot faster. That was good, I just ran my face right into that beaver. 
And uh, again, because she can double jump essentially whenever she wants and is not committed to a jump arc, she has a lot more maneuverability, and that allowed me to pull off that. <laughs> it's allowing me to pull off all kinds of crazy shenanigans I could never dream of doing as Richter. That was too close. I should have gotten that one, but it's okay. The Turtle Sub-Item is an interesting one. It gives you temporary invincibility, as long as you have it. Well, I'll showcase it later, so I'll explain it more then. We actually need the Berg Sub-Item to, to do what we're about to do. So, the next item that we need, I'm actually making a uh, miniature save for myself here so I don't screw up and, uh, and I did screw up and I had to actually load state a couple times. What we want to do to get the final um, sound item for this stage is um, we want to actually beat the behemoth that's about to chase us. How can we do that? Now with Aria it's easier because you can actually run away a lot. She has more speed, she can hit more often, so on and so forth. All we really need to do is jump over here, wait for it to get close, use your item crash. It makes you invincible while you're between it, and if you get behind the behemoth, he stops. You can just sit there and hit him in his pelvic bone until he dies. And then there's the sound item. Now because I screwed up a couple of times, um, I ended up going back and reloading, which is fine. I had to do it anyways. So, the alternate path for stage 2, which will lead you to alternate stage 3, is very easy to hit. All you gotta do, just drop down this pit. You could drop down the second pit and be a little bit further along, but either pit works, and then it's just move. Now, with all the fishmen and all the peepers, it can be a little bit hard if you're playing as Richter, especially when you see those uh, ceilings there and you think, I can't jump through that, so you try and restrict your jump. No, you can get through it. And with little Miss Maria and her speed and acrobatics, she can get through here pretty quickly. In fact, your best bet is probably just to hoof it on through and use the door. And that brings us to the alternate boss of Stage 2. Who is... Ah, yes! The Bone Golem. I never actually got to fight him. I got to fight him as Richter, but I figured I'd show him off here, too. He's not that bad, especially when you're fighting as Maria. In fact, he is considerably easier when you're playing as Maria. Spooky, scary... Oh, wait, it's not Halloween. Crap! I missed out! No! <laughs> but yeah, because of her double jump like that, dude, it's so easy for her to reach up and just tag this guy in the face. Richter wishes he could do this. I don't know if you'll actually be able to beat the game proper if you fight Dracula as Maria. I'm not 100% sure. I think you have to do it as Richter. I don't know. Now, I should warn you right away, even finding everything that I find in this video, I still don't find everything. I'm at about 83 or 84 percent. Oh, I still hate that. I think what I have to do is, in order to unlock everything and get a perfect, I have to actually go through every every stage and every, I have to go through every stage and their alternate paths. So like I'd have to go through stage one and stage one alternate. I have to go through stage one and fight the normal boss and the alternate boss and then do the same thing for stage 2, 3, and 3, 3, 4, and 5 as both Maria and Richter, which should contribute about a percent each. So, yeah. I'm probably never going to do that. Or maybe I am just missing some items somewhere. That's entirely possible, too. So now that we have defeated the Bone Golem, we move on to stage 3. Now in stage 3, you're going to need the uh, book item from Maria, which you get from the stairs over here. It combines time stop as well as um, a wall of moving things which can block enemy shots and hit them. Whenever she uses the normal version of it, as you saw there, it will actually slow down time just by using it. And while trying to break out of being stoned, I discover an interesting skill that is unique to Maria. I was stunned. 
This is the first time I had seen it. I had forgotten about it. This is a special ability unique to her. Only she can do it. And it is very, very powerful. And if you do that, that's how you get the uh, that money that's worth so much there. It doesn't use up any health. It doesn't use up any uh, hearts or anything. This is kind of the special ability that she has. Oh yes, yeah, so if you use the item crash, you'll just do like a time stop thing there, which slows enemies down. Also, the notes can damage enemies, but only if they're up there to get hit. So, this special ability she has, it's interesting, but the trade-off is, uh, unlike Richter, if Richter doesn't have... Oh yeah, just destroy him. If Richter doesn't have any sub-weapon equipped, he can use an item crash to do a flaming whip attack. Maria cannot do that. No matter how many hearts she has, she has no special she can activate by not having a sub-weapon. On the other hand, she gets that punchy McFist lady. So here we're trying to actually go to the alternate path. I do not believe there is any items here that I missed. It is possible. Like I said, I'm doing this off the cuff. This is the first take. Hope, well, technically second, because I did kind of screw up my introduction, but that's okay. These guys are easy to kill if you have the axe sub weapon as Richter, but as you can see, they're actually kind of giving me a little bit of trouble here. And then, of course, the spear guys, oh lord, just. They're instantly slowed down the moment you activate the ability, and they're just utterly destroyed by her singing. It's amazing. Actually, in, uh, I forget the name of it. You know what, I'm just going to leave it there because I was going to try and remember something. Uh, it's a PS3 game that I have played before. It was also on Xbox. But um, she she's a character in it, and she sings a lot better. Also, I tried to double jump over here, but sneaky little bastard knew what I was doing and moved into position. So, if you want to find the alternate path to the alternate boss in Stage 3, You'll want to get onto the elevator on the left and destroy that stone. I'll break the chain around the stone, and that's how you do it. Also, I ended up finding something that I completely missed. I looked at that wall and I said, there's something there, isn't there? Look at that! A sound item I would have missed. And that will take us to the alternate boss, which will lead us to the alternate stage four. Yes. No. Yes. I'm getting my stages mixed up, I think. <laughs> uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm, I'm a little confused. I'm used to doing this on an uh, on an, an episode basis, so I know what stage I'm on at all times, but since this is a clip video and I'm jumping from stage to stage to stage quickly, it's a tiny bit confusing. But I'm almost 100% sure that this is stage 3, and this path would lead us to the alternate stage 4. I'm pretty sure. I'm 70% sure. And this guy, again, just like when fighting him as Richter, he's still pretty easy. He really is. Same attacks and everything, although he did kind of turn on difficult mode. And by difficult, I mean he made it difficult for me to hit him. He did not cooperate with me frequently. I kept trying to hit him with that, but he kept, you know, not getting in range. Or disappearing. Or spoiled bastard. Hey, you didn't like that, did you? Punch you in the fucking snout? Do you even have a nose? I can't tell. So the notes don't actually break the fire, but then again, the fire is not breakable. It will break those stones, though. You, you enjoying your eye fire there, dude? I think he's enjoying his eye fire. Just standing there impatiently like, come on, bro! Your sweet time, why don't you? For some reason, I couldn't get turned around the way I wanted to. That is a hell of a lot of damage. I like it. Unfortunately, I don't end up uh, using this ability more often. Partly because um, I discovered it after the fact, after I did the video, and um, after I did the main series. 
And um, partly because some of the levels, some of the alternate paths I was trying to find and such gave me so much, so much trouble that I just, I just wanted to get through it. So this is probably one of the last times you're going to see this ability, unfortunately, because it took me a couple days to actually record everything. So we move on to stage four. Now, if you, this is the way you would go again to find the alternate path. Now, believe it or not, if you roll under this guy and you're fast enough, you can just slip right under it. Now here, there are two paths that you can take. Both lead the same way, but one is a little bit easier than the other one. And believe it or not, even though it looks like it's dangerous, as soon as you get up the stairs, it looks like this will lead to your death, but it won't. Just drop straight down the pit. Boom. Break that, get another sound item, and then proceed to the right. But once you're about halfway down the steps, stop a moment and wait. There you go. You can actually hop on these things and just follow them along. Heck, you can even crawl on your little turtle. So the turtle sub-weapon item will provide you invincibility. Obviously, because it's such a, such a heavy shell of armor for a little girl to carry, you cannot move very quickly, nor can you jump. But hey, you're invincible! I don't know if there's anything in those candles, or anything with that over there. There probably is, so that's probably some of the secrets I'm missing, but hey, there it is. This guy up here, you can't hurt him. Why would you want to? All he does is grab the little spears, mix them up, and puts them over there. Of course, he won't actually pick you up unless you're, um, if you're in turtle form. And then he puts them up, or on the stairs, and they just roll down. And then you proceed on into this next room. But first, I'll actually show you what it's like to climb up the stairs. Instead of taking the easy shortcut. Believe me, those guys are even harder when you're playing as Richter, just because they come at you from odd angles, and again, you're not very mobile. This part is a nightmare as Richter, because you have to have precise jumping. And the jumps are just high enough, they are just high enough, that Richter's double jump does not get him up there. Add to the fact that you turning around on the stairs is kind of difficult. Oh yeah, and if you get caught under the sphere as it rolls down the stairs, yeah, it hurts you. So in order to get up there, you have to actually wait for a sphere to drop down to the top of the stairs and then jump on it and jump off of it before it's too late. Whereas Maria can just double jump up there like a boss. She gives no fucks. As far as I know, there's nothing... Aside from that invincibility, probably the first time you would encounter it in the game, there's really nothing else here. So it's just a matter of, um... Heading to the left and continuing onwards. Now, something I missed and I completely forgot, you can go down these stairs, just like before, to get, uh... Oh no wait, no no no. I went to the left first, that's right. Because even though I showcased it in the videos, I didn't actually pick it up at any point. Because I didn't have the red... I didn't have anything that could break the red uh, skeleton things yet. So there you go, there's the next item. Continue to the right, and uh, I believe I go downstairs to get some more hearts. Unlike Richter, there are no weapon there are no sub-weapons for you to pick up here, just hearts. And again, because you're playing as Maria, you just need to double jump up there. Now, if you want to get all five hearts, the best way to do it is to spawn two, run down and grab them. Because you're just not quick enough to get all three. I tried to, but nah, screwed it up. If I hadn't stopped whenever I landed, I would have made it. But it's okay. Whoop, screwed up my jump. Now, you don't even need to go up there and deal with that axe load or anything. You can just as easily double jump up there. If I don't screw up my jump, which I do. Don't worry, third time's the charm. Yay! And then you can use the turtle item, believe it or not, to actually make your way past that spinning thing. But, again, I kind of screw it up, and I get thrown through it. Now, it is utterly important that you destroy all of these. If you don't, you're gonna have to deal with these as you try to make your jump over to the other side. You want to take them out. And it's also still possible to follow the normal path at this point, to go upstairs to follow the alternate path. Oh 
no. This isn't all that awful. Just need to be patient and not, uh, not rush. That's the important thing. Don't rush. Be careful. Also, if I remember correctly, yes. By following this alternate path, we will also unlock another item. Or find another item. Stepping as it is, don't go up yet. Deal with the guys down here first, because they will throw their axes upward, and the arc will be just high enough to graze your feet and kill you. Go slowly, deal with them one at a time. Don't try to fight them unmasked, because they will defeat you. I am one hit from death. This guy is pretty easy. Now, even though he doesn't throw his axe, he will actually throw his axe if you're above him. Otherwise, he'll just try to physically strike you for more damage. You get yourself a heart there, and then... Some more money. <laughs> and then finally, you unlock one of the original games. And then if you head down, you, um... That's how you get to the alternate stage 5. Uh, the boss you fight here is not terribly difficult. Yes, this is the item crash for this. You summon a freaking giant turtle that boomerangs around at things. It's kind of useful. Kind of. Now, unfortunately, I forgot that you don't get any healing items before this fight, and uh, that I was one hit from death. I was so grateful getting through that part that I kind of sort of missed that part. That certainly does a lot of damage, but then I forgot about the fire, and then I died. So, it's okay. We move on to stage 5. Now, in the ship, you want to get down to the engine room, where you uh, picked up that 1-up from before. Push that along, push it along, yay, and then we drop down. Her 1-ups also look a little bit different from Rick's. I believe they look sort of like a doll. Then you can actually hop up here and slide. Now, it should be noted that pressing down and forward and then X will cause her to roll. Rolling will not get you under these. You have to actually slide by holding down and jump. Trying to be clever there by throwing two at once. Looks like this is some kind of prison or something? A uh, brig, maybe? Yet another sound item. And then there is another sound item that I did not pick up originally because I did not have. Uh, not Sister Terra, but Iris's item, her good luck charm, that lets me break crystal barriers. And there is a crystal barrier here. And even with my superior mobility, I still managed to get it by not only this guy, but this guy too. Thankfully, I was still invincible, so he didn't hit me the second time. Damn. Oh, no, I actually did need the um, Sister Terra's item. And then that is it for Stage 5. And so now we move on to the alternate paths. Alternate Stage 2. Alternate Stage 2 is not all that bad. From here we're following the normal path, which will take us back up to Stage 3, the regular Stage 3. Just like when you fight the, um, the Harpies with the Gargoyles, you want to give them a second before you attack them. Now, I believe you can jump across to there, but I wasn't quite able to make it. So I know for sure there's something over there, but I just never got to it. Slide under there. And there you go. You could also jump across. I don't actually do it, but you could jump across there and continue on to the alternate path where you fought the uh, Sword Lord and uh, fight the alternate boss. But we're not doing that today. And the cat item is actually pretty powerful. It makes short work of these uh, skulls. Now, in spite of what you see, don't be freaked out by the sudden change of color. It's just there for to, to set the mood and change the effect and all that. There's nothing bad about to happen. And no matter how much you wish it, those guys will never accidentally hurl themselves off the edge. Usually. I think. 
I'm not sure. They will. The little skulls will. The skeletons? No, they're not that dumb. And then from there, that's how you get to the uh, normal path again. Now, if we backtrack, the second room that you go to in Alternate Stage 2, there is a shortcut, which can take you straight to Stage 3. Alternate Stage 3, I should say. All you have to do is drop down this spot right here. Shall I guide thee across the river? And Charon will guide you across the river. If you survive. This will take you back to below the first screen. If you had dropped down any of the pits on the first screen, you would have fallen into the water and died. Kind of like what I'm about to do. I don't actually make it all the way, unfortunately. But it's okay. This was going to take us to the ultimate stage 3, which is exactly where we're going anyway. Oh, I do pull that off by accident. Okay. Yep, that's where I screwed up. But it's okay. So, alternate stage three. When you get to the part where you can drop the, um, the spikes there and follow the alternate path to fight the floating eyeball, all you have to do is just keep going. Just keep going straight. Obviously, you don't really need to break those to get them out of the way, but it helps. It really does help. I don't know why I thought jumping there was a brilliant idea. This room's pretty straightforward, really. Nothing too special about it, just, you know, watch out for the, uh, the flying rats and all that, and don't fall into the death pit. Now, breaking that thing up there is incredibly important, because you need to get up there if you want to unlock another item. That guy almost ended me. If he had hit me, that would have been it. I would have died. So what you want to do is hop up here, and then hop across. Those are collapsible, so be careful, and be careful of these tombstones. They can leap just high enough to tag your feet and knock you off. Break that tombstone, and you unlock Symphony of the Night. And then if you simply continue onwards from here, you will follow onwards to the normal, path, normal boss path. If you're fast enough, you can try and roll under that guy, like I did before. But um, it's a little bit tricky since you're on an incline, so you're really better off just killing him straight up. Alright, and then from here we move on to Ultimate Stage 4. I found everything I can find. Oh, no, wait. No, we didn't. I actually went on ahead and fought this boss. This is the Minotaur. I kept trying to say it was the Dull Hand, but no, 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 no. It's the Minotaur. And I believe I'm still in day one of all of my uh, recording at this point. Because again, I do believe I try and use the Punchy McFist Lady a few times. That honestly sounded so underwhelming. Yeah, I was just shy of that. I think her smaller side does make it a little bit easier for her to get in under the axe. It should be noted though that oh ouch. Screw that up. Whenever he does that, he's invincible because the axe is in the way. The axe and the haft of the axe, the shaft is actually invincible, so he can use it to block attacks. So yeah, he actually shifts his invincibility zone, as it were. And there I kept trying to do it, and I kept screwing it up. Oh yes, you guys are probably wondering how it is you actually perform that move. Very simple. Press up, then down, down forward, forward in the direction you're facing, and the attack button. Sort of like reuse fireball, just press up first. So up, down, so if I'm facing left, up, down, down, left, left, attack button. 
pretty simple. All right, and so from here we move on to alternate stage three. To follow the normal path, don't jump down on the log field. Just jump across and continue onwards like you're trying to save Iris. Not Iris, Sister Terra, my apologies. No, it is Iris. Sister Terra was all the way back in stage three. My apologies, I got that wrong again. <laughs> And I thought I could jump over that frog. I don't know why I thought I could jump over something that can jump higher than I can. I just had a moment of silly. All you have to do is just keep going to the right. And then for this room, unless you want to get bogged down in a fight, treat it like you did alternate, the um, alternate path in Stage 2. Just keep moving. There's no peepers here, of course, but there are flea men and birds. Mainly Fleeman. I hate Fleeman so much. Just keep on moving, keep on moving, that's it. If there's any other secrets, I might have missed them. Alright, now we come to... <laughs> Alternate Stage 5 Path. The up path was hard enough, but now I'm taking the lower path. First part here, yeah, a little bit of this jumping so you can't get hit by the blades. Not the blades, the medusas. Oh, you want to take this guy out quickly, which I did. Then, you want to step on that, and prepare for precise platforming. You have to jump across these quickly. That was the easy part. The next part is so hard, I actually make a save state here and load, because I actually screwed up four times. You want to double jump. What you're supposed to do is double jump up there and take out that harpy, then the skeleton. But I screwed it up, but somehow it still worked. And now it doesn't really matter what sub weapon you have here, the one you want is up ahead. So when you get up to here, take out that peeper quickly. Then drop down. Take out the skeleton quickly. Jump up here. Jump up here. Take out the harpy, then backtrack, because you want the book. I got super lucky here. I should have fallen into the water and died, but I got super lucky. <laughs> now in this part, once you get on this platform, use your item crash with the book. Double jump over the Ancient Knight and finish him off. You want to slow them down, trust me. Now, believe it or not, once you get through this part, well... The people will wake up in a minute. I mean, who wouldn't wake up after hearing all of that? I mean, he doesn't even have ears, and he still woke up from the noise. But you have to remember, you're on stairs that are over a death pit. Water. So, yeah, be careful about how you deal with this guy. And then from here, there are two ways you could go. You could go up these next set of stairs that are coming up here, and proceed onwards to fight the Hydra. But believe it or not, Alternate Stage 5 has two bosses. Now, I don't know if regular Stage 5 has two bosses. I don't think so, but I'm pretty sure it does. So, if you go down the stairs you'll actually fight a different boss. I didn't know it was there. I honest and for truly did not know it was there. So I didn't know what to expect. And unfortunately, there's no food in here. At least, I don't think there is. It doesn't seem like there is, so we're going in with half health. I decide, Turtle, sure, why not, because I'm about to face the unknown. And I see the ribbons, and I think, what am I about to fight? Yup. Annette as a succubus. I don't do so good, unfortunately. But I give it my best shot. You saw how hard I was getting my balls rocked when I played as Richter. And speaking of Annette, here we are in stage 7. 
This is what happens if you use the key on the first cell you find. You run into Camilla again, without her giant skull lady. As before, she's easy. Three hits. All you have to do is attack her as she lands. Now, after you hit her the second time, which is right here, don't attack her the third time. Just keep back, wait for her to jump again, and kill her in the corner. Because if you attack her off to the right, she lands really close to the door and there's a chance you can accidentally walk out without getting the hearts. So, the final secret that I found. I almost missed it. There is a slide spot over here. And then the final secret that you guys have been waiting for. The giant room that requires you to play as Richter with the time stop item. This one's tricky. What you have to do is jump, and if it looks like you're going to land in the right place, activate your item crash in the air so that the moment you touch the ground, you turn it on. And there's the last sound item. It's important that you not try to go for that one-up on the way in. Get it on the way out. There you go. That's all the secrets that I know of in the game. If there are more, and I'm sure there are, they're there somewhere. Maybe I'll find them in the future. I don't know. But finally... We have finished just about everything. We should be ending up at about 80 plus percent. Yeah, 82. Technically it's 83 because there is something I missed. I know where it is, but because I ended up having to constantly load and everything, I couldn't get it. But I do have it. But, most importantly, we finally have enough money to get the secret item. What is it, you ask? Well, we're gonna find out. We're gonna find out together. It's just showcasing the fact that Maria has Little Miss Punchy McFist. That's all it is. This is a developer playing the game and just kind of showcasing that. Doesn't actually fight the boss though. No wait, yes it does, but doesn't do a very good job of it. She really does a pretty bad job of it. Guardian Fist is pretty powerful though, it's kind of nice, I like it, but like I said, the developer is doing a really bad job. This is not me, this is the recorded in-game thing. You can get the game yourself, get the $600 and click it, and you will see. So yeah, that's all it is. Unfortunately, <laughs> I discovered what it was way before the fact. Kind of a, kind of a letdown, honestly. It's kind of a letdown. But we found so many secrets. Well done, developer. But we found so many secrets. We saved everyone. We did. We did basically everything that can be done. There's really not much else left to do. So, friends, we come to a close as soon as Maria stops spamming that. It has. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> ah, just end it already! Just stop! You're embarrassing yourself! Oh, and so, friends, we come to a close. I have enjoyed doing this series for you guys, and I look forward to many more. So thank you for watching, everyone, and I will see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. If this is your first time on the channel, then welcome aboard! And please consider clicking that shiny little subscribe button down below the video. Also, a quick reminder that I am running a Patreon campaign, so if you'd like to support the channel, I'd be greatly appreciated. Thanks again, guys, and remember to keep being awesome.